you are a man of god that nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you and you have to understand the way this works we're going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 Please give it to us quickly. 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 8. Praise the Lord. Read with me, please, Koinonia. Ready? One to read. Stop. 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 God is able to make all grace. Let me explain that to you. Please, all of you, come. Stand anywhere you want to stand. Just stand anywhere. Scatter yourself around. Don't come close to me. Just stand. Watch this. Call these guys graces. The grace for prosperity. The grace for favor. The grace for speed. The grace for spiritual fire. The grace for influence. Watch this. Access to the hearts of men. This is you. This is your destiny. And the Bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some i can have the grace for prosperity and i'm rich but i suffer but i succeed you are rich but no man helps you because you don't have favor you only have prosperity the proof of favor is not money is the loyalty of men if you do not have access to the hearts of men you don't have favor you may have resources so this guy has prosperity so he will labor wake up in the morning sleep late in the night eat the bread of sorrow mix it with hard work and eventually prosper but as far as spiritual fire is concerned the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of god is not in him so that grace is not there he has some but not all and the part the grace dimension he does not have the deficiency of it will show in his life he is getting richer but not as his soul prospers this is the grace he needs when you pray and intercede for this man now god will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of god that has this dimension so that in addition it will be added to him are we together now now listen very carefully please look up everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are living god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited through a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave god you don't honor anything that has to do with god again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers is babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this 
praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you traveled from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya ah oh, i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination you think hold on you think is the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able god is able god is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what caused listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation to know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray
Let there be restoration. Please bring them out quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's save time, please. Restoration now. I speak it by the Spirit. The power of God is still coming on people. Recover. Recover. By the Spirit. Recover. I stretch my hands. Recover. By the power of prophecy. Recover. Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. Recover. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery let me tell you you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow I speak to you may that grace come upon you now again recovery 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 restoration I want to take authority over the spirit of delay I'm seeing many people your feet is chained in the spirit you want to make progress but you cannot make progress fire is falling from heaven now i decree and declare inside outside all the overflows anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now i will hasten my word to perform it i will not just perform it i will give speed to my word the word is quick and powerful i declare again any family here any individual under the yoke of delay i speak to you by the spirit that yoke is broken now that yoke is broken now broken by the spirit hallelujah now i want to pray please listen i have prayed this prayer and for those of you who have missed it in time past, may God grant you the grace to receive it now. Listen, truly speaking, there is a grace for speed. Please hear me. A man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now and that anointing is coming on people as usual you find people running by the spirit but I need to release that anointing father I stand under heaven in this miracle service there are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family that dimension of speed where ten years can be put in one year I declare right now let it come upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now speed parush kabarakata speed career speed i give speed to your life speed to ministry receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy, please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night things will change in your life. She's your mother. Help that woman, please. I'm looking at the Lord in the spirit. I'm putting my hand inside a river. 
and I'm bringing something out and the Lord says the destiny of this family in the name of Jesus that's the daughter I command by the spirit every planting that is not of the Lord I overturn and I uproot now in the name of Jesus Christ who is Naomi I'm hearing a name Naomi we have to hurry up I want to pray for the sick Naomi Hello, Kim Madonna. Ah, hello. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I cancel CS. By the spirit of the living God. And I decree and declare. Like the Hebrew women, you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say. Baby is breached. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus name. Let me pray. Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, oh, how can this? You know, I'm saying, you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Huh? Were you backing a baby? That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Ah. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder every time I see that if you are from that locality the power of God comes on you immediately in the name of Jesus I command witchcraft associated with that territory even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young. But you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now, as I speak, overflow two. Mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. 
in the name of Jesus I pray for you come my dear the grace that will want to make married men disturb you look at me I come against that spirit now not only you there are five other people I'm seeing I don't know where they are but in Jesus name there is a like like it like an almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you Parus Kamana Hashileketa in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven I lift that negative thing off your life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus I hear the name Magdalene I don't know if Magdalene I want to pray very quickly we have to pray for the sick you are the covenant keeping you can Jesus. I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God I'm seeing your feet in mud in the name of Jesus I lift you out of this tragedy by the power of the Holy Spirit and I speak to this lady I'm seeing this lady but all I'm seeing is snakes completely I declare be free now by the spirit of the living God the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost let me pray for you my dear grace for you the favor that is on your life I command it to start speaking it will not only be a name that is on you it will speak right now in Jesus name your sister your name is Magdalene come in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you Look at me. The Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life. These two things. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Please stand up. I speak to you by the God of heaven. The month of November. A big miracle is coming to your life. A big miracle. I lay my hands upon you. And I declare in the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Why is this girl here? This Magdalene come my dear I pray for you place your hand on your head I declare oh God let this chain be taken now I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head be removed now be removed this like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity I remove it right now in the name of Jesus Christ somebody lay your hands on her so anybody just touch her release her now by the spirit of God there's no place for you take everything that belongs to her restore it and go now now please listen I want to minister deliverance please believe it you may not know the woman from Kenya come it's time for God to change your life please stand up when did you come here uh, yesterday yesterday yes. you came here God is about to turn your life around Amen. Glory. you are still coming and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming Amen. Thank you, Jesus. madam what do you do what do you do? I'm a commissioner for human rights. Commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi. Yes. In in two weeks, I'm going to be in your nation. I would like to see you in your nation. There is a reason why I'm talking. I'm not seeing you alone. I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for. Yes. But I want to pray for you, madam, because I don't know if you believe it or not, you have a political destiny. As you are like this looking at me you have a political destiny in Kenya and God by his spirit 
is going to make this happen but another thing is there is also the call of god upon your life you are a woman that love god there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you will get to a point where among the graces god will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace god is going to bring this grace upon you god i'm also seeing you build a charity foundation there is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that i see you build i'm seeing food stuff and i'm seeing different things first it will have to do with young girls people who have been abused and so on but i see it not only that i see women too women god is going to increase your influence i lay my hands upon you and i declare by the spirit carry this grace go to kenya with it go and excel i command the two lift gates of nairobi and the entire kenya to be open for you in the mighty name of jesus christ go with this anointing go and prosper may the lord multiply your political career and may the lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah praise the lord an angel of the lord is standing here someone will shout here under a strong anointing i just saw that grace i don't know first i think until the shout happens i know why god just from here right to the back there is an anointing i just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of god here now listen whether you know it or not if there is anything influencing your your destiny that is not of the christ is about to give way right now <laughs> hallelujah at the count of three hear me whether you are inside outside or following online i want you to shout that name jesus with understanding it's not just a chant my bible says the name of the lord is a strong tower not a weak tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved i want to pray for you i know you've shouted in other months but great deliverance great deliverance is about to come your way father i pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the christ that is sitting on the destinies of men and women manipulating their results i stand and call upon the god of jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and i declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now overflow one overflow two overflow three all the extension online i declare be free now from ancestry be free from foundation be free from witchcraft bring them out operations of darkness i'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb and i'm seeing it close it doesn't just mean physical barrenness it means a spirit that is closing the door of results many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and i stand by the god of heaven by the fire of the holy ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now 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 be open now
mighty in this place You are mighty in this place You are mighty in this place Faithful God Hallelujah Hallelujah in our midst yeah, you do want to see in our midst faithful God hey hallelujah hallelujah unchangeable God unchangeable unchangeable for finances listen to me please I want you to believe it there is a grace for finances and it's coming on many people I'm not asking you what you are doing I'm not asking you what you know I'm telling you what God is doing I stand by the God of heaven and I declare father the men and women that must enter into this dimension as you are showing me at the count of three may that grace rest upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now a strength grace for abundance receive supply from heaven supply by the spirit let things walk in a way that will surprise you. I command things to walk in a way that will marvel you. mighty God a few minutes we are going to pray for the sick now now please listen I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one that's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining it's just a revelation that God is giving me there are two angels standing by my left and my right and every time I see this God wants me to move listen hear me except God is not God when I pass any road where you are anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life it must give way now I only do this for this and overflow one afterwards we are going to pray for the sick please I want you to just believe I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions i want you to believe it i will pray not everywhere but there are a few people i'm seeing this happen by the spirit I shift you in the spirit every limitation that does not name the name of Christ and pray mantles anointings by the spirit coming on people right now let that presence of God shift you to dimension in the name of Jesus dimension I'm seeing a chain around here. I break that chain now. I'm seeing a chain around here. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Let that chain be broken now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Chains be broken now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. From everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush ali katosh. Embreke teke teke te. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. By the Spirit of the Living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. sensing an evil spirit just around here i come against you now i take authority over that influence you must go now go now go now go now go now overflow one lift your voice and pray in the spirit now listen your brother's keeper you don't have to touch me please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself but as i pass here anything that is not of god is about to give way right now thank you jesus go now let it go now let it go now let it go now all times i come against you now in Release them now, release them now, release them now, release them now. I'm seeing what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete, be free now, be free now, be free now, be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca Rebecca they call you Becky Rebecca just not inside here you are what's your name Rebecca don't worry it's okay what's your name don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ come I end oppression now over your life and your family oh, you, my dear your name is Rebecca where are you from you are from are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I cast that spirit by the God of heaven. 
if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit you are from that region i stand by the god of heaven let it come to an end now help them please let it come to an end now in the name of jesus hold on please right here there is a gentle man who will be mightily used by god i just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone i stretch my hands lord i don't know where they are Paruska Badu let that grace come on you now strange mantle prayer fire word fire illumination in the spirit receive that grace now receive that grace now receive that grace now I'm standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming on people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of god is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of god new dimension new dimensions i've seen an anointing here new dimension the old story must leave you that's what god is saying i'm prophesying to someone here the old story must leave you the old is gone so that the new will come in the name of jesus christ where is the woman wait hold on please i held someone's hand now holding a photo of a sick patient where is he come on. who is this where is he he's in china what's wrong with him he's depressed now if i don't pray for him i'm seeing him inside a coffin in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god let there be deliverance for him now what's his name ibrahim this is not only something affecting him this is something that is influencing the entire family but i stand by the god of heaven and i set you free in the name of jesus be completely free and i speak to him ibrahim may the power of god touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for the sick my friend this man looking at me come where are you coming from huh? you are from kogi state what do you do are you a man of god you came here trusting god for fresh fire come you're about to receive it because i'm seeing you from kogi state you where is your church look at me sir where you have a church you are under a church mm. a time will come god will give you your own work now god is preparing you be faithful you will go but now is not the time you live now you will suffer for nothing are you hearing what i'm saying don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of god but surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing father i lay my hands upon this man let his dealings with the spirit progress in the name of jesus not only an impartation a dealing that produces real power in the spirit in the name of jesus may that grace rest upon you by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ this lady with green this lady you come the lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you two things will happen to you number one i'm seeing restoration god is saying i should tell you he's bringing restoration number two i'm seeing the gift of men please do listen to my message help them on the gift of men 
God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. Except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery. The way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me. Immediately we do that. We will pray for the sick. And we will start submitting our request. Where is that young lady that came out with one mama while I was praying for her? There's a young lady that was wearing glasses. I don't if if you are here you are the one what do you do you are going to be very wealthy come are you a lawyer huh this is your mother where are you coming from madam okay you are the reverse woman this lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy because i'm seeing you a lawyer and you are going to you i don't know what area of law you are going to specialize but i'm seeing you sitting with so many business people this is a lot of business people signing contracts helping people to process a lot of things millions huh that's what that's where she is right now doing some things abroad she's what that's what she's doing right now where she works that's what she's doing now right now where she works because i'm seeing god will just cause them to like her it's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man. There are people who are out to genuinely bless. Yes, and I pray for your daughter and I connect her by the Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. she will find these people. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, she will shift her to another dimension. Amen. Mama, God is saying I should tell you, forgive. Does it make sense to you? That's my husband also. He's a lawyer. But... Your husband is a lawyer? Yes, yes. What was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles. Because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense. And God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you we live in a society that is so hot conscious this one hurt me this one did this there are too many things that can create offense the bible says in nothing should you be offended it's a choice mama in the name of jesus please don't cry i don't know what it is and why you are crying but my dear comfort your mother after the prayer eh? in the name of jesus what is before you is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples 
that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there's a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right mfm my friend you're serious you come from where mfm kano mfm kano how about yes, you Calabar. mfm calabar yes, how about you lagos lagos i want to pray i'm not saying if you are from mfm just come out like that they are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend i am going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from Akwai Bomb State. there is serious witchcraft sitting on your desk yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes huh? sir you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting yes, huh sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until it starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh very serious with god you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh and tony tony in the name of jesus everything that represents witchcraft i join my faith with that of your father and your leader Dr. Daniel Odikoya and I decree in the name of Jesus be free now I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit the spirit of death far from your dwelling in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you who is looking for a job uh -uh, I'm not saying I'm not on employment I'm talking to these guys that I, of course I know that people are trusting God for jobs where did you apply Huh? Kaduna State Civil Service. The Lord says, I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Uh, prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Amen. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone in the name of Jesus become the chief cornerstone. Receive of that grace in the name of Jesus. I speak it so. I make it so. I establish it by the power of prophecy. Let me pray for you. Gentlemen, I don't know if it's you or someone related to you, but there's someone God is giving a job. 
someone looking for a job but i want to pray for you father you called out the gentlemen from mfm kano and the remaining places i decree and declare by the god of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life let it give way now in the name of jesus let it give way now even by the power of the holy spirit the lord is showing me a lady i'm not going to ask you to come god bless you but i'm lifting up my hand i'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what i'm seeing but that one is not pride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the lord is saying i should pray that that veil be torn i don't know who that person is but right now the power of god is going there there, there are many of you i perceive in the name of jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus the christ of god i declare that veil torn into pieces now torn into pieces now inside outside online torn into pieces now the last case i attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick nothing ever lasts in your hand this is the problem you are trusting god for in fact is one of your requests nothing many good things continue to happen but they never last if a, if a season of open door comes three four months sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two three months for reasons you cannot explain you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years as it comes you will see it sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream you may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you this is what i'm seeing the moment that thing happens it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down but i'm praying right now in the name of jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty i declare by the spirit of god be free now be free now help them please be free now free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you i saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit i release you into that dimension in the name of jesus christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach i call it by his name and i command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what i'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things i'm not saying to run consciously i'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of god order in the church are we together the the hand of god now as i speak is coming upon you my soul longs and even thirst for you my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face and burning longing for you. I 
I declare to all of you that came out by the Spirit, I shift you. Go forward now. Go forward now. The power that holds you down, I take authority over it in the name of Jesus. Go forward now. I release your families to go forward now. In the name of Jesus. Now, please hear me. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now, listen. For those who will be laying hands on you, don't think that because it is not Joshua Selman laying hands on you. Remember I told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace. We're about to pray for the sick now. Now listen, please. There are three conditions that I will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv number three you are suffering from barrenness it doesn't matter what overflow you are in if you have any of these three cases please with those who are in the main auditorium i want you to join them and come otherwise please all the overflows move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers or protocol anyone trusting god for to be prayed for for healing right now i want you to make your way to the front quickly and then in addition to that the three cases i've mentioned you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up overflow one please walk to your projector stand overflow two i don't know from where now as directed walk to your projector stand overflow three walk to your projector stand um my god i don't know if there's overflow to be then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we are going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you are yet to write your prayer request per adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you are done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online i believe that theirs has also been collated we are going to have everything now so that as soon as we are done we'll pray for the request the moment you are done please wave it or pass it to the person um at the aisle where it can be picked give them room to write if you need a piece of paper you can help your friend or wave your hand Throne is established in justice and righteousness. Lord, you reign, King of the lands. You are the ancient of days. Lord, you reign. Help me. We cry, holy, holy.
praise the Lord. Thank God we have some hands tonight. Um, Pastor Jake and Ejimi will do overflow three. Since there will be several people there, overflow three. They'll be ministering to overflow three. Benga will go to overflow one. Promise overflow one, two. Um, Kenny overflow two. Two A now. Uh, two A or two B. Praise the Lord. Isaac overflow two B. Praise the Lord. Ima overflow. Overflow what now? What is left? Huh? Overflow. The last overflow. Where the overflow four? No overflow to be go to overflow four. Praise the Lord. It'll have to be a very quick work because there are several people. I'll minister to the people here. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. Please, except they want to talk to you prophetically. Don't worry. Listen, just a touch is all that you need. And I want you to believe by faith. As soon as they touch you, do what you couldn't do, head back to your seat. Unfortunately, because of the limited time, we may not have time to take testimonies as you would have seen in many of my external ministrations for two reasons. One, this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people. If we pray and say, if you are healed, come out, it will take a lot of time. We don't have that luxury of time. Praise the Lord. So we are doing three things at the same time. One, we are praying for the sick. Has promised. Promise. Okay. Pastor Alpha. Oh. Uh, who is in overflow one? Only you. Two of you. Okay, Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow three. Pastor Femi. Uh -huh, he, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two. Two B. Okay, with, with Ima now. Two B or four. You are in two. Only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in overflow four. Overflow four. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your requests, believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone. And then we'll try to tie it up tonight but whilst you are sitting make sure you connect by faith you can involve your loved ones let them know that god is moving right now he's blessing people lord we give you all the praise let there be great miracles by the spirit of god in jesus name i pray praise the lord thank you for your patience please rise up on your feet if they are still praying for you where wherever whatever overflow don't worry just just hang on there please stretch your hands to this request as we pray I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the spirit unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please lift your voice everyone let's have all the requests here please if there are people who are yet to submit I'd like you to stretch your hands to these requests as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings, reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. 
Shibra Katush Kapredis Zaparuta Sadekata Balash in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please agree with me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Louder, Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, tonight we come to you, the God that can answer prayers. And Lord, I decree, standing in the presence of your people, thousands of people have submitted their requests a representation of their expectations their pain their disappointments their anticipations lord i decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the mercies of the God of heaven we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow this request to be answered in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we break that hardness now. Father, answer speedily. Lord, answer speedily. Turn situations around every death sentence represented in this request we declare that death sentence is cancelled in the name of jesus and so father we give you praise because we declare by faith the very faith of the son of god that these requests are met in jesus name as i stand upon these requests i declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of jesus that which God has done now remains permanent in Jesus name and I prophesy over you by the God of heaven the Egyptians that you see today that pursued you from Egypt to the Red Sea and beyond I declare by the Spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in Egypt if you go out of Egypt no going back in the name of Jesus between now and the next three weeks may the God of heaven in the name of Jesus 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit I decree and declare it will not exceed three weeks And every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems I mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest I mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of Jesus give Jesus praise hallelujah I'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here. Please, I'd like you to be sensitive. Don't be careless about it. Hallelujah. Please, they can come and pick it. I believe in the power of prophecy. The spoken word is also creative. It can make things happen. It not only reveals what will happen, it makes things that has no business happening to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare over you. Please hear me by the God of heaven every door that has been closed over your destiny I stand here as the servant of the living God I force that door to open now everyone trusting God for a job a meaningful job not a nonsense job that does not have honor I pray now 
a job that will not take your relationship away from God a job that will not make you compromise receive that job in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life the kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season I speak over you receive fresh fire access to revelation access to light receive it in Jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of God to come to pass I command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness I cause it now and I command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death any family here appointed unto death I speak by the God of heaven be free now number two every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the Lord I cancel that pronouncement now listen by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of Jesus I cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life I speak to you by the Spirit step into it let me pray for favor I will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like Eli your eyes becoming dim I pray for you I fan back your vision to flames in the name of Jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life I declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me I speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years I push you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ hear me I speak to you by the God of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly yeah. 
and anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of jesus may god humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may god answer their prayers i open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth i declare give birth like the hebrew women in the name of jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but i must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of jesus by the god who is the lifter of men i declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren in jesus name by november miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of jesus christ the final prayer i'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as god is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not i stand in agreement with you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make jesus lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand
come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Join them quickly. Scripture says you must be born again. If you're coming from outside, please make it snappy. Make it as fast as possible. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. Please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i ask you to be my lord my savior and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight and forever I move forward ever backward never these three ladies didn't pray the prayer somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer the prayer is already finished you this yellow girl and those two those my sisters or shall any of you are you not Christians direct them someone pray the prayer with them in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now begin to walk in victory in Jesus name I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit you will know him you will walk in his ways you will command strange results in your life in the name of Jesus Christ let's give a big 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 God bless you amazing amazing woman of God father open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ we have received already powerful truths powerful impartations Lord we pray and we cry that in the name of Jesus you will teach us your ways and cause us to excel by the Spirit in Jesus name I pray please be seated God bless you amen and amen and amen i believe that there are many things that we have learned already and are learning that may not have to be taught a minister's conference requires discernment the eyes to see and the perception to interpret correctly look how anointed and how powerful everyone who came to hold the mic was and is and yet in the midst of all of that their hearts are open to receive see this is why sometimes when I look at a lot of people who believe that they have nothing to learn I really get very sad I really get very sad blessed be the name of the Lord so let's get to the word um, I will just share a few things and I stand as one who has been granted grace by God when you teach in a pastor's conference it takes the grace of God to really communicate the truth but I really, really pray that our hearts be open to listen. There is nobody that will listen to these truths that will go down. It's true. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 17. Just a few things that I believe will help us 
in ministry organizations and so on and so forth let's read together one to read say unto Archippus uh -huh, take heed to the ministry which thou has received in the Lord that thou fulfill it let's read one more time and say unto Archippus take heed to the ministry which thou has received from the Lord that thou fulfill it it's one thing to receive a ministry and it's another thing to fulfill that ministry especially in the days that we live in we must understand the secrets of the Lord that make for excelling especially in this generation and so I'll be sharing a few principles that I believe make for sustainable impact in ministry I think it's wise that I back off a little and just maybe share with you my convictions about what I believe ministry is if you have to use a pulpit to believe you are in ministry then you are not in ministry a pulpit should be one of the least platforms for doing ministry unfortunately the average pastor permit me to speak with the bias um, for the fivefold the average pastor believes that until you have access to the mic and you talk to people on the pulpit there cannot be a platform for ministry i think that's that's terrible it's one of the vain deceptions that tradition brings it means is it possible for koinonia to still be in ministry and for two months there is no stage work are we together now I believe ministry starts with knowing God not blessing people not building churches the, the foundation for true ministry is a personal encounter with God there's no man who is truly qualified no matter what earthly and physical ordination there is no man who is qualified to claim to be in ministry except you understand the God that you are sent to represent for the most part the average preacher is concerned with dispensing truths listen carefully teaching writing books holding conferences and I agree with that there is a place for that but I am telling you true ministry from God's standpoint is your secret place with God because every ministry will rise to reflect your knowledge of God so you are really in ministry when you grow is proof of your love not just for God but for the people you lead every man of God will impart his limitation or otherwise on the people sent to be under his care so the foundation for true ministry is the knowledge of God unfortunately you see knowing God is not a very attractive thing there is no charismatism around knowing God there is no there's nobody watching you to give you the uploads that we so desire knowing God is painful knowing God is time-consuming knowing God is boring it is not natural for man in his human nature to seek God we don't have that kind of allowance we always like to see the results of what we are going to get before we start but when you start with God he says follow me I will make you but the extent of the making will be something I will reveal on the way follow me so the disciples were frustrated what are you turning us into we've been following tell us give us a clue and he looked at them 
we continue to follow you every day you cause trouble and i mean what just give us a preview let us know and one time they were tired of following and they took initiative and when jesus was not around they brought an epileptic patient and they said let's quickly try to shine and they were utterly disappointed when jesus came they were angry they had to probe him they said why didn't this happen hallelujah the knowledge of god the knowledge of god the knowledge of god the knowledge of god moses before he started ministry when he had an encounter with god please listen i'll be as simple as possible he said who shall i tell pharaoh sent me you're not going to stand before pharaoh and speak opinions and god said ah you are asking an interesting question okay let's leave the issue of pharaoh now let me reveal myself to you he says i am that i am please listen to me the safest anchor you will ever hold in ministry is not finance in ministry bank account it's not social media presence it's not even your intellect when all is said and done it is your knowledge of god that becomes your safest and most secure anchor let's be very careful because the times that we live in there is a lot of confidence in billions of naira and dollars in the account wonderful exegesis of scripture i'm a good teacher i'm a good preacher wonderful i'm innovative i am this and that and that and then our knowledge of god is very small very small and we find out that we do everything that should make ministry work yet it does not work every true ministry starts from the secret place not the pulpit the secret place and it doesn't matter if it's fivefold ministry or ministry as business or ministry as leadership it doesn't matter it will still start from the secret place so he revealed himself unto moses showed him certain dimensions of his glory he said now you have seen and you are convinced go and tell pharaoh let my people go god prepares you so that you are not scared of what you see you see when you really see god nothing else will scare you ministry is scary without an encounter I remember a gentleman three four years ago who just sent me a text he said he had a dream and he was going to start a church i said well i don't think it's the best decision he said you know the guy just cut off and went away started a church and just three or so weeks ago he sent me a text he said i can't believe what my life has become what is this and i told him when you stand before pharaoh without seeing the burning bush you've heard me say it again and again the first issue that started squeezing him was finance and then the second the reality of living with men and then all kinds of things and i told him i said you, you see what you've done to yourself say unto archippus take heed to the ministry that you have been given from god that thou fulfill it everybody say encounters please say it again say encounters if you do not know god you don't have a message if you do not know god you don't have a basis for representing him many preachers do not know god they were only ordained by a pastor they needed more pastors and they said now we want to expand and please i'm not being sarcastic at all you know my love for the body of christ and so i can now say we want to open 20 branches one two three four five i've observed your life come you are pastor this you are pastor that you are pastor this find your way here find your way there and the people get there and they know ministry ethics but they don't know god they know how to preach they 
understand all the homiletics and hermeneutics and everything but they do not know god and so the staying power especially when things don't produce as expected is not there let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong man in his might let not the rich man in his riches but let him that glory yet glory in this please listen that he knoweth and understandeth me i don't trust anything in my life outside god is uncertain the bible says that god has no variableness nor shadow of turning that's a serious statement he doesn't have night and day there is stability so when the anchor of your life and ministry is god no matter what happens you will remain standing is god speaking to us this morning encounters i remember years ago when the lord started with me you've heard me say it and i will keep saying it again and again god denied me the privilege of doing so many things and it was very very painful all that i had to do was spend time with him and build no preaching no nothing and at that time there are a number of people here who were in zaria at that time you know now there's a lot of the teaching has stabilized a lot of things but those who were there in zaria at that time oh boy you could see a man of god who can be you know all kinds of paraphernalia three or four people holding the briefcase and the man is just moving up and down well suited in a hot sun with nothing no message no encounters and i felt really sad for some of these people i remember once and again trying to reach out to them and say something may be wrong and you will regret it eventually but they wouldn't listen the greatest way to hurry in life is to stay with God if you ever call staying with God a delay you are joking if I sit in Dangote's office from morning till night I may not say I wasted my day because humanly speaking in one moment and with one check he probably can create a lot of possibilities around my life we have indoctrinated ourselves listen into thinking that time spent with god is a waste he's shortchanging your time for shining we think the only way to shine is when you stand before men no i've learned the power of the secret place no matter what happens in your life if you stay in the secret place then you continue to move forward are we together everybody say encounter if you're in ministry here please listen carefully i don't care whether you've been in it 10 years two years your secret life must be greater than your public life to excel i continue this is very hard for me now even as i'm speaking because of my schedules and all of that it's very difficult it is luxury for me to really find quality time i tell you sincerely you must know god you must have a serious encounter with god encounters produce convictions convictions i have a lot of regard for people who are sincerely wrong because even in their error they have conviction i don't have a lot of regard for people who vacillate convictions at any show of hope it's better for me to be sincerely wrong and stand there it is easy to be adjusted that's why jesus had a problem with the scribes and the pharisees all of the people who were there the madman knew he had demons he just sat down there and it was easy for him to be free 
are we together now an encounter creates convictions so that you don't believe this today believe this tomorrow return back to what you believe next week you are not going to be an effective minister that way because i will be teaching you shortly you have to build people sequentially along a thought line i think this is one big mistake that pastors make i don't want to go ahead of myself we think that ministry exploits is in the scarceness of the truths we share that means every sunday there must be one mystery or one thing i would dish out and once people are saying mm, boy my god can you imagine this dimension you will find out after two three years that it's like hopping to every faculty for lectures and expecting to be awarded degree my question is in what you didn't stay long enough in a department to be awarded that degree nobody is giving a degree in nothing convictions many preachers do not have convictions we teach and then you return back and doubt you too you were not very sure of what you taught you just return and say ah, i hope i did the right thing i just hope that the truths that i share are really truths and after 10 20 years you'll find out that a lot of preachers will now say this ministry thing i'm done with it i was going to minister in house on the rock pastor fred and I, a gentleman came and met me and said apostle my father was once a pastor i said so what happened he said right now the man recites quran he has become um what they call these these teachers yes i said what happened i would not mention the denomination just to honor them i said what happened he said he was a preacher nothing was working and they kept giving them you know the, they have the manual that you used to preach and when the guy finished the preaching he would go back and say what is this why am i deceiving myself it's not working my family is dying my life is dying i'm sick i'm tired many preachers are like that there are central topics shared around there are conventions you must hold when the time comes there are reports you must give doesn't matter whether god moved or not and so that ritual over a long time erodes god out of the process administration is important but without god is hellfire i believe in encounters i truly believe in convictions anything i'm not convicted about you will never hear me teach it there are things and areas you may never hear me teach on i may touch it here and there but my conviction has not grown beyond a threshold level to communicate it and i don't want to feel guilty for communicating that area are we together now we need convictions still on encounters you see let me teach us something very powerful by the privilege of god's grace the pattern for your ministry comes out of your experience with god listen very carefully god is a god of patterns and in as much as there are universal laws and principles we must be very careful i believe the suggestion to put the ark on a cart was because they saw it somewhere i don't believe they just said oh let's decide to put it on a cart they probably saw them carrying another deity through the ark and they say this is a cheaper method i mean why burden men when donkeys can do the work and in doing that there was a serious trouble in many pastors conferences and respectfully so we have to be very careful blueprints that were not part of the design moses received the blueprint on the he was not the architect but he received the blueprint the dimensions were given it's not enough to build the tabernacle you must build according to pattern if it will host the glory of god you need a pattern it's good to receive mentorship it's good to emulate but you must sit down lord how is this going to happen there are times you will say for your ministry you will only stand still and the egyptians you see today you will not see forever other times you will say go around jericho seven times it is not every time you stand near the water you have to part it 
there are times she will need you to walk on it so don't assume that because the water parted yesterday you will part it tomorrow your pattern comes out of your experience out of your experience if you don't have an experience with god you will not have a pattern for ministry whatever trends is what you will hop into is god blessing us this morning an encounter with god creates convictions an encounter with god creates patterns the edge of any effective ministry among other things is the pattern we win generally in life not necessarily by the dexterity of the army but the flawlessness of the strategy it is also true spiritually i know a man of god who i think he once listened to my teaching where i was talking about the fact that you may not see any poster of koinonia here and there and the guy got up with zeal without knowledge and went to tell his people who said no you know if apostle can do it i can do it and then they refused they they said no visitors sleep again no um uh, what they call it uh, flyer he even truly speaking cancelled they have what they call a follow-up department cancelled everything say god cannot bring them by and the guy was suffering terribly terribly it wasn't even him that reached out to me it was someone else that reached out to me and said please you will need to help my pastor i think something is wrong let it not be that it's your message that is confusing this man and i said no you see there is a difference between a doctrine and a personalized dealing there are blueprints that god gives you on account this is one of the benefits of the secret place there are things that god will give you customized to your work with god it is an error if you build a doctrine out of it most of the traditions that destroy the body today started as personalized dealings that god gave men because of my work with god listen carefully it's possible that to create efficiency god can tell me you my son do not have more than three children this is my dealings for you i have weighed it and seen that your most efficient state will be with three children only now when i take that person because of the efficiency that comes by keeping in what to what god told me i will now say look the most recommended way to be effective in ministry is to have three children whereas the destiny of the next prophet is in the fifth child tradition will stop a prophet from coming to bless a generation preachers let's learn this this is why encounters are powerful i'm still buttressing on encounters that god will teach you the difference there are things god has told me you will never 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 hear me tell anybody it's between me and god it's like a code of operation come pastor it's like a spiritual system of operation so the for william branham listen for william branham there was a way that the angel of the lord will come in a meeting are we together now william branham will wait to, for a long time praise and worship the worship team is singing and the guy will just wait what are you waiting for he says waiting for the angel it was a pattern and as soon as the angel came that's it his eyes if that angel did not come sir this man it will be like a charm he can't see now by the time we create a ministry out of that and you now mentor people that the only way to minister is to wait for the coming of william branham's angel are you seeing that now before you know it a spirit will come as that angel because these spirits can appear as angels of light this is how many people got into error subconsciously so an angel will come and tap you and say i'm here now this guy's name is femi you say what's your name femi you say this thing is working i mean i can't, I can't believe this you didn't go into error knowingly not understanding the difference between a doctrine you don't change doctrines they are they are principles defined by god's integrity 
but because of the unique nature of man as an entity god will have to create a system a curriculum unique to you that's why every man must know god for himself i know men of god who don't worship this is a distraction to them you are playing that and clashing cymbals they say two of you go out of my meeting please don't distract me and you are wondering how in the world is this guy going to heal the sick you keep watching you just keep watching the moment is time he will tell you it's time and from nowhere you will see people flinging wheelchairs and there are people when there is no keyboard when there is nothing playing you will truly think that they used to carry charms they will stand and look helpless and powerless Benny him up until today huh Benny him you see the way this protocol guy stand you stand in front in Benny him's meeting like that he will send you away he doesn't want all of that they choose those who sit in front he doesn't want anybody when you are sharing and he's seeing the voice of unbelief are you sure go to the back go to the back fast go to the back you must understand this these are the products of an encounter they will you're dealing with god then you know what to he will separate between personalized dealings and doctrines so every time you are teaching your personalized dealings you put a disclaimer this is to support your understanding not just to create a pathway are we together now Papa Ie Adeboe kneels down when he's about to preach. It's not in the Bible. Paul bows his knees to pray for the people. But because of his work with God and a system he created by the wisdom of the Spirit to acknowledge God. It is alright if you have the revelation for it. But there are many people as they are kneeling down you know that this person is just doing nonsense. Sometimes they don't even pray. They just kneel down and rest their head and stand up to fulfill the ritual. Everybody say patterns. You must know God for yourself. I can tell you not only when an anointing comes to the place, but what anointing. And it will not always be by visions. These are things that cannot exactly be taught. They were products of the secret place. I was trained by the spirit to recognize anointings. I can know what anointing is in a place. It's not everything you say that you see. I remember the first time I started seeing angels. Please listen. I didn't see angelic beings. I started seeing like, you know how a ribbon is. You know how, you know how children play with ribbons. This is what I was seeing. I didn't even understand what I was seeing until i stayed in the secret place and then i remembered that angels move in the similitude of light and then god started helping me even before i started seeing angels read but today there's a lot of lies people say i'm seeing an angel standing they are even saying jesus is standing here jesus you go and read your bible and see what happened to men when they saw him in his glory nobody saw jesus in his glory and just stood like that laughing no. let me tell you if an angel appears here or any spirit being if one eye can see it that doorway that interface that has been created must create a reaction the rest may not see but they will know something has happened look at paul saul of tarsus the moment jesus appeared he was the only one seeing him the rest just found out they were falling what in the world is going on here because that pattern is not there we have to invent lies lie word of knowledge lie prophecy lie anything because we have been taught that once you can prophesy ministry will be lucrative it's dangerous everybody say encounters you must know god for yourself that when you stand and tell people god will bless you you know the god you are talking about and the fact that he can bless you listen 
the god of abraham isaac jacob must become your god there is a name that your experience must give god that name is the dimension he will flow with in your ministry you hear kenneth copeland when he's ministering he can just turn and say yes sir i'm hearing you sir as if he's talking to his friend is his way of knowing god and that encounter that he's had with god are we learning something this morning this is very important so we need a revelation of an encounter with who god is ministry can be extremely distracting it is your knowledge of god that keeps you in focus do you know you can succeed in ministry as an art the same way you become a tailor the same way you become a a chef you can become a minister a preacher a dispenser of teachings and there is no life there is no power unfortunately members have enough discernment to know whether you are connected to life while you speak at first it will start like a dissatisfaction the wedding in cana and the wine finished preaching is still going on and somehow that life the life giving factor in your communication that is is only obtainable in the secret place is not there while you teach truth so you find out that what you are teaching is true but the corresponding transformation is not coming ask anyone you know who is close to me I don't sit down preparing sermons just by saying no I think this is nice um, first Corinthians this I think they would like to hear this wow this is wonderful brilliant amazing I mean this and that and that I've been preaching for a while and let me tell you sincerely it is possible for me to sit down and not open my Bible and not study and except God reveals to you by word of knowledge you will not know like I said it's an art when you have been opening a book a long time you are not too dull some scripture would have been in your head just because what you are saying is correct does not mean it is anointed encounters encounters you must make room for god in your life if you want to be effective as a man of god listen to me we have a space pastor for our cars even if you have 10 cars you put a garage for them we have a storehouse where we keep food we have a place for our jewelries ladies jewelries no matter how small the room is there is a small box or something we have where we hide money even if it is in a pit somewhere but there is no space for god in our lives and our environment we smuggle him through any way and say god you just manage it and he looks at the space you have for your car he looks at the space you have for your clothes and he says where is my own place where is my own place ministry is an overflow of your secret place ministry true ministry is an overflow of your experience with god impactful ministry is an overflow of your experience with god listen ministry is not teaching necessarily not preaching necessarily not just healing the sick necessarily but the transformation that can come to a people and a territory on account of your knowing god and your understanding his ways this is ministry every other channel they are just platforms they are support systems the life giving part of ministry is your knowledge of god there are men of god who can be so busy one meeting here one leadership meeting here and there you are concentrating on the support structures we'll talk about that a little but i need the the epicenter the pivotal point of a ministry is a man's knowing god so i know you are preparing for ministry not just because you are buying banners and suits not even when you are painting your office and putting a chair 
I know you are preparing for ministry to the degree to which your hunger and your passion for God is growing. I look at your secret place and I know the efficiency that will come from ministry. Let me tell you why this is powerful. Our generation is unforgiving about mediocrity. If they give a chance to hear God from you and you mess up, it will take mercy to bring you back to that stage. There are too many alternatives today. Gone are the days where you have only one voice and they have to make do with that voice. Right now, the moment you don't dispense truth, there are scattered around the entire globe are people who are serious with God. His presence, the gift and the blessing that comes from knowing him, his power that comes from a relationship. You know, I, I shared with you um, my story. You may have heard me say it one time. Where I used to stay uh, in the quarters a, a few years ago, um, I have this neighbor here and there. He's also involved in, um, uh, what do I call it now? It may not be fair to call him a herbalist. Would I say he's a herbalist? But he does, well, you, you know what I'm talking about, isn't it? Yes. And he believes he helps people with it, you know. And he has helped people. He told me his whole track record that he goes to Lagos and does all of that. And so when I came to stay there, things started really going bad for him. Because nobody was coming there again. And then one night, this is true. He just came and just knocked on my door. And I came out and in a very personal way. He said, look, you know, the way his life is going now, Kai, this thing is not really working. And he was talking to me whether there was a, a possibility for collaboration and there was a way I could, like, lend him whatever I was using. It's true. It's very true. And so I laughed. I told him, I said, sir, I understand. He said his own is a gift. They inherited it from their own father. So it's not some, he's not a bad man. Let me, he's one of the nicest men I know till date he's a wonderful man so i'm not talking of um, um an evil man in terms of maybe character no he's a sincere person and i told him i said in this life in this faith walk the power you get is not something that is in your hand independent of god it comes from a relationship it's like an intercourse where the woman's pregnancy is dependent on her meeting her husband are you getting what I'm saying now? You can go to a herbalist and collect power and don't even know his name. I came because I'm in trouble. He says, do you have the goat? The black goat is here. What else? Here. And gives you the charm and you leave. But that's not the way it is with God. When you come and say, God, give me your hand. He said, take my heart first. It starts with my heart. You find my hand in my heart. Very important. Whatever has the possibility of destroying, listen, destroying your love, your hunger, your passion for more of God. You have to trust God for grace to create a system around it and throw it out of your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's powerful. The most destructive things that can kill a man of God are not evil things. They are good things. Evil things you can easily detect and run back. Pride, lust, you can run back to the secret place. But money, accolades. You will read the scripture and say, this is what should happen to a man when you are serious. So you will believe God is working and you will not grow. Satan will always use something good to destroy you. He will seldom use something evil. It will be too noticeable. Everybody say encounters. Very powerful. God bless you, Pastor. From your encounter will also come your message, the message or your mandate. Please write it down. To make sustainable impact in a territory, in a generation, you must have what we call the message, not a message. You can have messages. You can have sermons, but what is the message? Every great man I know, no matter how vast in spiritual truths, has a central theme that represents the communication of what God has granted him access to see, 
to know and to communicate to a generation are we together now pastor fred was saying something very instructive when he came here it truly is important you see the best of any minister is only an effective minister there is no how you can see all of god from one standpoint so he distributed his dimensions across the body and no matter how effective you are no matter how vast you are in knowledge you will have to be compelled by the spirit to stay and understand god in a dimension when you mention joshua selman you don't think relationship and marriage and this. no doesn't mean i don't know anything about it but i'm not an expert it's a waste of time if you invite me there somebody will be shouting while i'm saying let us pray and that's not what you plan for people are sitting in a round table with jews and not. have you ever seen anyone invite me for a valentine talk no does that mean i don't know what to say about relationship and marriage you will be joking when you are sick and you are lost benihin comes when you are weak and there's no faith walking in you kenneth copeland comes are we together now when there are all sorts of oppressions in your life dr dk olukoya comes when your life is scattered and you need mercy fast papa kumui will come with one message how many one one message you will hear you won't know whether to stand or to sit down or to lie down listen nobody rewards you until you brand your impact constructively are you getting what i'm saying now impact cannot be haphazard you must brand it with the unique dimension of god committed to you i should be able to did you look at all the men of god that came here right from yesterday you can almost speak the unique grace the unique operation everybody said the message the message represents why you exist as a ministry you must have the message what did god send you to do he sent me to preach the gospel no that's not your message that's the great commission it wasn't given to you it was given to all of us or a robot said every time he will say this my assignment is to take the healing power of jesus to the nations and the pattern for dispensing it is by laying on of hands even if you were ten thousand he will not pray like benny Hinn and then take testimonies he will lay hands one by one that's why he succeeded he was one time the greatest healing evangelist in the united states tl osborne was granted that grace to communicate the message his entire ministry was centered around the message of the saving the healing and the delivering power of jesus when you listen to samadayemi even if samadayemi holds a business i mean a, a healing service in that healing service he must mention value that the power of god has come to give you value oh his his lingua franca will betray him it will rebrand him back you are not ready to be honored when there is confusion as to what you represent to the body so you must have a message it must be clear the bible says write the vision make it plain so that he will run that reads it these are very simple truths but you need to understand this the message a flourishing and an impactful ministry must have a message hill song many of you know hill song because of their music they are not just singers they have an exact message and the message is to see jesus glorified as simple as that all their songs are centered around the cross and the finished work of christ that's all they sing about don muen listen to him very carefully don muen the entire scope of his music ministry 
is not just to reveal Jesus but also to communicate hope and life you listen to his songs he never sleeps he never slumbers so that among the many artists we have when you really need hope you know who to go to it's very important the message number two the second ingredient that will make a sustainable ministry is a strong leadership and an organizational structure now please pay attention we started well by talking about our knowledge of god our encounter from which comes the message from which comes the pattern from which comes our convictions as powerful as all that i just said is if you do not have a strong leadership structure well structured with clear tasks and expectations you may fail this i believe is where i will want to take a pause and honor so many ministries that have poured into my life in this area especially the house on the rock truly speaking i honor them for this one thing because based on my background there was no there was no system to stimulate leadership and excellence are we together now yes but as god began to grant me access to truths and quality relationships he began to help me to see the need for effective leadership when it was time for people to eat bread jesus said let the people sit down in 50s why because if you have a crowd of five thousand people and everybody tries to collect that bread they will kill you and kill the messiah if they can and eat the bread if there is no order one person's appetite will eat one basket they sat down and wastage was minimized it's important you cannot just allow anything to happen from and by everybody in ministry no there has to be a system spiritual people have this problem anointed men and women of god are some of the most disorganized people as ministers why because of the excellency you know when you truly are anointed and you have a message people will forgive every other thing and just endure but it doesn't mean they were designed to be that way Is somebody getting what i'm saying leadership to the extent that the secret to scattering the sheep is not to chase them is just to strike the shepherd that's all when god wants to destroy i mean the devil wants to destroy a sheep he does something to the shepherd and that's it moses was weary leading about 2.5 million people he was tired he was fagged out and he went and was frustrated and jethro his father-in-law came to him and said mister you are going to weary yourself everything you are involved in you are a human being he said set captains over thousands over hundreds over fifties and he created that leadership structure let them be the ones to handle some of the issues in the early church there was a very intelligent organogram where the apostles were not allowed to be involved in matters of tables when the grecian women remember and the, the women began to fight in every organization once a crowd is more than 12 get ready the humanity of men will play it is leadership that will solve it not prayer for as long as there are one two three four five six seven it is possible for dr emeka to hit me unknowingly who do i report to there is nobody i report to myself and i react back by saying mr man the next time you hold me i will kill you and he will prove to me that he's a doctor you see that chaos and anarchy many times we forget that we are spiritual but we are also human leadership was designed to manage the humanity of men i hope you know divorce now i'm not talking about marriage and i don't want to talk about a very touchy area but i'm saying that was the extent of moses's leadership 
he found out that things were happening he could not understand and he said lord please permit me i'm going to have to invent a strategy because in this camp of 2.5 million some people have been beating their wives in a way that i don't think my conscience will allow and then god said okay in that case let there be a certificate that will mean that the people have been separated it was not god's original idea but for the sake of peace and organization moses had to invent a strategy leadership is very powerful it makes ministry easy leadership helps you to identify what is wrong you can't blame everybody for one person's mistake if the sounds go off i can't begin to quarrel you and say sam why did the sound go off that's none of his business are you seeing that now when Achan carried part of the treasures in Jericho that should not be carried there was a system of isolating them from tribe to clan until it came to his family it would have been unfair to punish everybody but leadership provided an opportunity to isolate where the trouble was to deal with it when there is no leadership you will blame you will sabotage the creativity and the effort of others because of one person's mistake there has to be clearly defined tasks and expectations let me tell you this never provide an office when there is no need for it whether it's in an organization or it is in ministry do not create an office when there is no need for it human beings cannot stand being idle and they will find something to do a church of say 100 people should not be having pro1 pro2 vice president admin vice president this vice president that the work can effectively be done by two or three people the other seven or ten people will have to look for a way to be relevant is intrinsic in the human to feel that he's making progress and they will have to invent assignments or tamper with other job descriptions for a long time there was no public relations department in this ministry the protocol department was doing the work of five departments because we had not seen a need to create it as God began to bless the ministry, the need came. And now we had to carve out a department that responds and represents our presence to the international community. Very, very important. There is something called due season for things. And by the time you create leadership structures that is not yet the season for them you are going to cause a lot of trouble chaos and anarchy if you're with me please say amen, amen. well structured with clear tasks and expectations let me give you an advice that i learned following a pastor's conference i think it's a very instructive advice allow for creativity but never without supervision you cannot indefinitely allow people to be creative and just to continue to invent strategies without supervision because their creativity will stretch them sometimes to go out of the pattern given to you by god so it is good that people become and remain creative but that their creativity must be within the jurisdiction of the the order that was given to you if you allow people there are things they will do that will get to a point where God will ask you who sent you in this ministry for instance I'm someone who is very comfortable to allow our precious people and they know I love them with all my heart to be able to come up with their ways i don't unnecessarily interrupt there is a level of autonomy within the various departments but never without supervision you don't invent an idea and execute it like that no everybody say leadership 
this is very very important number three The third key that is responsible for making sustainable impact in ministry is to understand your execution strategy. Now, these things I'm teaching are very powerful. They are not my opinions necessarily. They are truths that I've gleaned from ministries that have worked based on God's standard and even by the standard of success i've had the privilege by the grace of god to study the largest and most impactful churches in every continent execution strategy that means the strategies you put in place that will allow that vision to come to pass there are three things under this number one your execution strategy is what will invent the activities of the ministry within that season every activity should not be receivable just because a church is doing it a man of god is doing it does not just mean you just ship it and bring it no your programs the subdivisions of the ministry and the various activities in the ministry they come from your execution strategy how god said to do what you should do you see for instance in the miracle service we we didn't start submitting prayer requests eventually god gave me this and said it's an opportunity to be able to pray for the people so every miracle service we collect the request representing the pain of the people and we cry before the lord here and you can tell the testimonies that have come out of it Almost every worker, if not every worker in this ministry, knows the subdivisions of the ministry. They are not a secret. Both the ones for the future and now. It is very clear. There is an exact leadership organogram that defines the various subdivisions of the ministry. These are the platforms through which the purposes of God as committed to us will be executed. Everybody say execution strategy. You need it in business. You need it in, in, in your organization, not just church. Under execution strategy, again, is your culture and ethics. Your culture and your ethics make part of your execution strategy. How do you behave? What is the modus operandi of the ministry? In as much as we frown at tradition, in as much as we frown at religion, no organization becomes impactful until their impact is systematized are we together i have had the privilege to visit um the churches of all the men of god represented here and for every one of the churches there is a culture there is an ethic i humorously say it you don't find someone in koinonia just because i'm teaching and he's touched he will not just sit down with one thousand naira and hold it from where he is and just throw it and say let it get to the altar no it's not a culture it's not the way it's not the blueprint that god has given to us are we together don't i hope i hope you are not you're understanding what i'm saying it's very important when you go to the bank they have a system of working they have their work ethics they greet you and smile tired or not it's a system they are paid to do it if something falls on the ground now not everybody will come to pick it are we together now there is a system for picking it there is a department whose jurisdiction also make for remedying this kind of thing most people do not have a culture they do not have ethics let me tell you this culture and an ethic is a system of standardization that means everywhere koinonia service is held 
there should be an expected behavior there should be an expected pattern i have seen ministries look at this i have seen ministries where a whole service is like 10 churches in one now you would think nothing is wrong with that the guy who does the opening prayer invents his way of doing it and he does it maybe the way he saw somebody who mentored him the guy taking the praise and worship can choose to just do something and say pastor come up me and pastor we're going to dance are you seeing that now he thinks it's supposed to be a very nice thing he say you you must dance or someone can come up and sing worship and because he's taught say everybody kneel down everybody in the whole church kneel down his presence is here you see those kinds of things destroy your you are anointed but you may never go far you will know you are wrong when you start a tv ministry when there is an angry person from one nation who will write you and tell the government ban this man he's, he's communicating wrong values to the people a culture there has to be a way of working is someone learning this now you systematize your impact when you have a culture train your workers train your workers give them the flexibility to be creative but you must train them when you are coming to perform a function what is the protocol for what you are doing if you are in house on the rock many of you have been there you would notice they have a system for collecting their offerings for praying for all of this based on the blueprint that was given beautiful system saves time the moment you give offering you pass it to the priest on the aisle and he stands and the ushers just walk pick it up and it's done there are churches their own pattern now regardless of efficiency their pattern is you first go outside are we together and then you give whatever key is comfortable to the music director and then you begin to dance you are liberty to choose how fast or how slow you want to dance and one person would dance and go back and dance and go back and listen listen i hope you are getting what i'm teaching you there are many things we do that at a localized platform they can forbear it but if you want to be global you must adjust not violate your convictions but you must be able to adjust to minister to people what kind of songs should you sing you can't leave everybody to his creativity to just raise any song and say i just had a song this morning and i really like it you will learn it now say this and that and that song may not be compliant with the values as revealed by god to the ministry are we together ethics how do you behave when wealthy people come into that church how do you behave when politicians come what is the system of receiving them what is the system of welcoming them you don't wait till they come then you start thinking what do we do with this guy now no if if the governor of this state or if someone now is going to come what is the system if you don't learn this god cannot bring influential people under your care if someone comes to testify up here and says god bless me i have a job i mean i have created jobs right now i have the power in fact i'm thinking about it between now and next month i'm even looking for about 300 people to give them jobs what do you think will happen to those who are not employed they will wait for him after service they've already come with their cv for prayer so straight they will just go outside and will that person and others may find his address and just come and knock many pastors have refused to come back to certain churches because of what the members did after the service they follow them to their house and say sorry i'm not don't be offended i i just i don't know if you can help me zip my house sir. the way god has blessed you no culture no ethic i'm going to share something and please pastor stand up pastor dan don't be embarrassed yesterday after the meeting the protocol came and met me they packed all kinds of um some i think it was a gift or so they brought for him and the wife and then 
they gave him and said, Kai, you blessed me. Take, sir. He refused to collect it. He said, give the protocol. I am here to learn. I am here to grow. And when the protocol met me, I looked, I said, oh, what a wise man. I said, whatever we can add to this and bless it, let us give him and honor him. You see that? A man of God that is in discipline can come to another man's house. Listen very carefully. I went to a particular church and a young man gave me a car. I said, no, 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 I'm not collecting this car. Go and give the car to your pastor and bless him. When he went to the pastor and said, sir, God spoke to me to give apostle this. The pastor called me and said, apostle, this gentleman is serious. He wants to bless you with the car. I said, well, whatever it is, are you in agreement with this, sir? Culture. Anytime I go to a ministry and I want to do anything that I believe or I know is not the usual practice, I will usually seek for permission from the man of God or if I can come stand with him. These are things that you have to learn. It's not all about anointing, anointing, anointing. There are systems. The first system of recovery for a mighty army was the coming back of the skeletons, the structure. Are we together? Just like Pastor Fred shared. When you enter a man's house, listen, no matter how great you are, if you are in someone else's house, you have to work with their system. If they remove their shoes outside, take off your shoes. I remember the time I went to minister in Cherubim and Seraphim. I was invited to minister there and they were all happy that I was coming and I blessed God for it. As soon as I got there, you know, our dear people there said, no, 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 apostle, enter with your shoes. I said, why? Why should I enter with my shoes? I took off my shoes because that is the protocol. I learned this from Dr. Modok. Protocol is important. Adaptation is proof of honor. When you come to a ministry, don't come at your terms. Have the flexibility to bend to the practice. I never come to a church and then I'm just excited because of my relationship with the pastor. I just get up, I hold the mic, I say, God wants to move. Choir just, and mm -mm. you sit down and wait for your time. If they call you to take offering, don't give word of knowledge. Let us pray. Father, we bless you for this and that and that. When you finish, God bless you. That's it. Pray for children. Don't start talking about marriage and pregnancy. Pray for children and leave that place. As the Lord has granted me grace to minister in certain platforms, I'm seeing the strictness of complying with these principles because here there are people that can be a bit free but in those places there are people who have earned the right to be offended when you violate their privacy in the name of spirituality is someone learning something execution you must know how to behave and how to function within any organization you must know and you must create a system that way how do they reach you? If I want to invite you now and I don't have a relationship with you, what is the system to reach you? Many ministries do not have official lines. There's no system of reaching them. If you are starting, you can use your line. For many years, I handled my ministrations, invitations myself because I didn't see a need to have all of that. As, as time went and I couldn't handle it again, I transferred the responsibility to the protocol department. There must be a culture and there must be an ethic. Are we together? The third under execution strategy is priorities. Please don't be tired of what I'm teaching you. We are soon going to pray. If you truly want to be effective, if you came here this morning, it's not just for prayer and impartation. It's to know the ways of God and to excel. These are the inner working systems that make for efficiency. Priorities. That means your focus and your emphasis for the now. It's not everything God gave you that you can do now. There are things God will tell you that is for 10 years. Koinonia is going to have a TV ministry. 
We are going to have schools. We are going to have all kinds of things. But for now, for now, this is the assignment allocated for now. And so we restrict ourselves. Listen, the resources that God will give you will always be sufficient for your program for now. There are many ministries that do not have priorities and focus. A ministry just starts and in one year, you may be holding five conferences. You may do very well except for the fact that the ministry finance may never rise. The entire collection for that ministry in a year at that level may be maybe five million. And now you are organizing a program and you are bringing two men of God from the U.S., and the two will come with their keyboardists. They will come with other people. The man himself will fly first class. You see that? And the PA, he can decide and call you and say, my son has been crying that he needs to see Nigeria. You know what that means. Once a baby can walk, he's a passenger. Full payments like the adults. Now you pay all of that and you continue to stretch members. Are you seeing what makes many members run away from the church? The program will be powerful, but in the end of it, it's always on deficit. Always on deficit. You cannot build and you cannot grow that way. Some guys one day, I think it was last year, very nice group of friends that started to pray and they really believed that they were praying for a revival to come to their land. And they sent a text. They said, Apostle, we need you in this land and we are going to bring you. Silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, I think, just, just stop this there. Don't, don't make a fool out of yourselves. There are many anointed men of God in that region. They will ignore them because they think they are not anointed. You see that? There is... Is there is somebody at your level that can serve the purposes of God. Have the humility to enjoy that grace and grow as time and wealth and wisdom allows. Even as I am now, as a man of God, I know my boundaries. Spiritually, financially, sociologically. I will be stupid to do certain things and engage certain things. Faith is not foolishness. You must know your boundary and respectfully stay there. I will not get up right now and then go to Port Harcourt or go anywhere and say I'm doing a citywide crusade or go to the U.S. and say everybody come and fill this stadium. It's called vain glory. You must get to a point where you know that God has tried for me, but I'm still growing. Are we together? There are many times during our leaders meeting, you know, we can share a few things that we want to execute. And many times my people will just hear me keep quiet over the issue. Once I shelve an issue, they know that's it, leave it there. It's very, very important priorities what do we do now god these are all the things you have said we'll do but which do we start with first what do we do now so number one is an encounter that births your message your convictions your patterns number two strong leadership that makes your impact systemic three an execution strategy that defines your activities, defines your culture and ethics, defines your priorities. Number, the fourth one is your system of reach. I call it your marketing. A system of marketing and reach. Now, please listen. Because many of us men of God are trusting God for increased membership. We are trusting God to honor us with more and more people. There is a strategy. Growth does not just happen like that. There are forces that must be engaged for growth to happen. Your marketing and reach. What does that mean? How do you let your world know you are there? The people will not come when they do not know you are there. 
the bible says and it was noised abroad that jesus was in town and it was noised abroad the lord gave the word he said great is the company of them that published it this is very important please listen no ministry will excel and thrive in today's world if you do not have an intentional system for your reach and your marketing this includes business the first way that you reach people now let me talk about ministry i'm focusing this on ministry i apologize for other you know um other areas of purpose the most effective way i know to really draw people is the power of results genuine results genuine results everybody say genuine results please say it say it. don't sleep say genuine results Two interesting people in scripture and the way they marketed Jesus. Please sit down, sir. I'm sorry. He's been standing all through. I'm sorry, sir. Look up, please, everyone. Once upon a time, there was a madman in a city called Gadara. That madman was hidden in caves. They would tie him and he would hurt himself. And Jesus crosses to the other side. And the first person he meets is that madman. After a conversation with him, the madman is delivered. Are we together now? And commotion is in the town because people lose immediately. Those who, who own the pigs, they just lost. And there was all kinds of things. This man, the Bible said, because of the impact of what happened, he went and gathered ten cities. How many cities? imagine that one striking walk of the kingdom upon your life gathering people let me tell you there are people who they are more than a microphone everybody knows about their challenges and their predicaments and when god touches them it becomes too notable people will always come to find out who did this testimonies are attractive they have a magnetic property they can draw men how did the scribes know that jesus would be in this city and you'll be having a program notice the scribes never sat outside they were always early for the meeting they followed the ministry of jesus followed the details they would hear that god did this today tomorrow he did this tomorrow he did that This is where I will want to bring a little balance. There is no other means of marketing and reach that will be more effective than a transformed life. Please listen to me. The greatest way to invite people is to transform those you have. You are not going to pray for more people to come and join the pile of lack of transformation. Change the people. The greatest testimony that, that really blesses me in ministry is not that the sick were healed. Sincerely, thank God for that. It's not that this and that happened. People received this. But when people say, my life changed, I listened to the message something happened i got to know the holy spirit i became a leader that's transformation this is why you see ministries like that of joyce Meyer, joel austin you may not see them do physical miracles and so because of that you may think that they are not doing anything until you see the systems that are intentionally transforming people some of them have tv stations in prisons some of them design the programs that the prisons use and so the endorsement of the government has made them a voice. This is influence. I've told you that the kingdom advances in two ways primarily. Number one is evangelism. Number two is influence. 
The second was the woman at the well. Jesus comes to meet this woman at the well and her life was in shambles, many husbands. And then Jesus began to speak with her. When he was done speaking with her, he didn't even ask her, go and publicize. She ran and said, come see a man. This is how people come to our churches. Listen, they will not say, don't you know Apostle Joshua Selman? They say, come see a man. When the people come and encounter you and your God, then they will go back and say, now we believe not because you told us. We have seen for ourselves let people not be invited and come to your church and say where is the man the service is over what did you invite me for what was your proposition what did you say would happen to me you told me if i came i would hear the word of god you told me if i came the worship would lift me you told me if i came i would see excellence i'm here now the grace is about to be shared i didn't see any of those things now that person will go back and still publicize but against your impact you say make sure that any day you see this man please don't waste your time there's nothing happening there do not ignore the referrals and the endorsement of transformed men do not ignore it this is one of the ways that God by his spirit has built this ministry for himself transformed lives you cannot deny transformation you may say a miracle is fake a breakthrough is fake a prophetic word is fake this is just psychology but how do you explain a transformed life are we together i was blind now i see i was wrong now i'm right i was in darkness now I'm in the light. I was poor. Now I'm blessed. This is the kingdom. Alongside the results and the testimonies that they bring, pay attention to your media ministry. Media ministry. Do not ignore it. Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, a flying scroll. He was seeing the power of technology a scroll that can fly it's a scroll that contains information but it's not limited to a localized environment it can fly to regions the media ministry is powerful look what the social media is doing that someone can actually sit down from one spot it's a system that has broken down it has manifested omnipresence that i can be here and yet i can be there zuckerberg is in his house but he's in your phone he's in your heart he's in your life he's in your mind he's in your decisions he forced himself into your values you cannot plan without him he didn't ask you he forced his way there you can institutionalize your impact such that any generation that ignores God through you will pay for it. Whoever ignored Jesus paid for it. Whoever ignored Elijah paid for it. Whoever ignored Moses paid for it. The media ministry is powerful. Brand your content to reflect your values. Brand your content to reflect your values. Very important. Media is powerful. There are many nations that I have not been to that today have been so marvelously blessed by what God is doing here. It is the power of the internet. It is the power of the media. It's very important. A disclaimer though, you must have strong spiritual and emotional strength to explore the tool of the media. Because you see, let me teach you something, dear men of God. An average man of God is already used to lavish celebration by the people within his circle. Nobody may have the right, whether they agree with you or not, they may not have the courage to confront you and say, I don't like you. Welcome to the world where the, there are audacious men and women. You can make one statement and your members are clapping and somebody comes and says for two weeks, let's analyze the nonsense this preacher has said 
and someone will be saying that's my man of god he said that may be your man of god but that's my foolish man who i'm correcting if you don't have the emotional stamina listen to me because many christians are strong spiritually but we are weak emotionally they said this about me and it destabilizes you then do not be global it's a risk you are not authorized to be global as a ministry and as a man of God if you do not have the fortitude to stand disagreement, to stand persecution. Do not fear being controversial, provided you have convictions. They talk about Jesus and they talk about Satan. No matter how far you go, it will be in between two of them. Your Jesus is the one someone can paint on facebook have you seen different kinds of caricatures of jesus your jesus that we go to jerusalem and roll on the floor for and the people are just watching this madman i thought they were here for tourism my jesus this is where you died this is your tomb they say this is not the real tomb they say this is the one that i <laughs> don't be offended when someone has no regard for your values men are just men this is a powerful advice I'm giving you. When I started out in ministry, let me tell you something. And, and Jimmy is here, he will testify. I'm not somebody that, I, I'm, a, I'm a man of peace. I honestly don't like trouble. So if it means me lying down here for peace to reign, I don't like controversy and I don't like trouble. And that time I used to wear myself out. I would pray and just spend time with God at about one or two. When I now want to go and rest, someone will now call me and say, Apostle, then there was a place I used to meet in, in the campus there. Are you at so, so, so place? I said, no, I want to go and sleep. And then they now blackmail me and say, didn't you say God sent you for us? I, I'm having pains. I want to see you and you are complaining. And I feel bad. I just go back and say lord this is for your glory <laughs> let me tell you something about men you will never satisfy their desires you do not have that ability the same thing that will put a crown on the head of another is what another person will advocate that you take off if you do not sustain emotional intelligence you will break down nobody wants to hear anything negative about himself if if i produce this and you hold it and say but this is dirty you mean pastor Alpha, this is all you could do as brilliant as you are whereas while you are saying it this person is on his knees collecting it many of you here looking at me you want fame but without the cross that comes with fame there is a huge cross you think it's everybody that likes me are you joking you think it's everybody that believes in me are you joking you think it's everybody that respects me are you joking have you not seen people insult papa Ia Deboe? have you not seen people insult kenneth hagin one time i stumbled across a video material that wrote down the name of almost every known man of god and just captioned it that they are all going to hell i said ah these are the guys that have taught the whole body of christ so if they are all going to hell let's find out quickly so that we can because you can't dodge any of them i mean these guys just carried the body of christ and said the church is going to hell convictions do you have the stamina to be controversial because every great vision is first fought before it is honored it is the price for renaissance is the price for a revolution is the price for doing something different as the fathers when women began to preach in the church it was war when the power of god began to move i remember a man of god i went to minister in his church and he was telling me about his state he said those days if someone falls under the anointing they can almost go and lock you up he said when the power of god started moving in and through his ministry it was strange they said he was diabolic he was devilish and all of that how 
will you feel if someone came for your service and while everybody was kneeling down they were just looking at you like this say is this what you call a man of god this is what you call church shame on you and you go back and say god they said shame on me god will say go and find out what they said about me <laughs> Let, let's keep going how many of you precious sisters they see you walk around oh this lady no earrings oh this lady head tie all the time and you feel bad and you are standing because some persons who have their values don't want to keep their values and come to destroy your confidence bending to become like people will break you because you will have to bend to every direction and your body cannot bend to every direction somebody will say sing traditionals alone we are africans you will dance and somebody say no that dance is is a demonic dance you are doing traditional and you are dancing did you see the way that lady was no 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 the way that lady is dancing with the brothers their mind will not be focused on the cross now you go back to sing hymns and someone will, you know listen be guided by the fear of the lord by conscience and by posterity nothing more you live to please everybody you have trouble god made the work easy focus on him he's the only one who will mark the script everybody is a student the best student in a class will still be assessed so don't let the ignorance of people around just come and challenge you are we blessed i just digressed a bit we're going to pray to teach you this let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you on easy lies the crown the the head that wears the crown it looks glorious when you see great people and great ministers sit on the throne but let me tell you ask every man of god here if you say a conference is coming you can tell them sir i saw a vision it is done the bills are not there ultimately it's that man's faith that is going to stretch you come and say pastor just to reassure you the conference must happen except god didn't give me the revelation you had the revelation this is the man that is going to produce the finances by faith that's why you see depressed preachers everywhere sisters that's why many of you are afraid of marrying men of god when you weigh the trouble and weigh this you just say kai mm. <laughs> that's the price for glory my dear people living in a world where everybody loves you that world is a dream that world is a big dream do you have the stamina to be controversial and yet focused and yet determined there are times that i go to minister and i thank god for the honor sometimes right from the airport you know sometimes people have bands that play sometimes they have some dignitaries that they bring to welcome me and i just come down and i see people who don't know me and you just see the anger who is the guy this is him apostle so what i wish coin on here i mean you see the anger this guy i say what is it my fault what, did i stop you from rising i mean look at look you see how people are there are many times people talk about my coming in many regions they hype it apostle is coming your life i'm telling you just come i can discern i'm a spiritual man as soon as i enter people are jumping sometimes you can see through the crowd what is this what is this generation becoming just because a man entered jesus entered you didn't clap now a man is you know and then i just laugh it over and i love them when i come up to preach usually sometimes they are standing oh yeah let's see what he's saying that is unusual what has he said that kenneth Higgins has not said what has he said? let's see it. Many times, usually when I start talking, five, ten minutes, they start softening up a little. They just look at nod, and later they do like they want to open the notebook. 
they opened it a little and then later on they're like ah this i mean this is pastor when they persecute you it's not unusual it's not always because you are wrong sometimes it's because you are right your assignment is to help even your persecutors so accommodate their ignorance while they change that's what makes you a leader the ability to see the more superior version of themselves hmm. i'm blessed by my own teaching here already the last the last secret to sustainable impact is the availability of financial resources please write it down this is a minister's conference and i'm just hoping and praying that god truly added value this morning to someone's life finance please look up pastors you will bear me witness and every man of god here will tell you whoever ignores the place of financial resources in kingdom advance will pay for it and pay for it again and again you see come down. when you start out in ministry you don't really need finances usually you meet at one corner under a tree somewhere all you are concerned about is the power of god falls on you you teach you don't need a mic you don't need anything so your focus will be on jesus your growth and all of that but now you get to a point where leadership where administration and other things begin to come in the financial burden of ministry can strangle your prayer life it can strangle your word life it can even strangle your values everybody say finance one of the questions that i ask the lord sincerely from the depth of my heart i learned this from pat robertson the founder of cbn 700 club he said when god called him to do ministry he asked god three things he said lord please give me three things number one wisdom number two favor number three the anointing of the holy spirit if you will give me these three i will go when i heard it i went back to god i said god i don't know if i'm going to ask you i've asked you before for your presence and now maybe let me ask first before i will find out later that i made a mistake please talk to me about the finance of this vision that you are showing me how is it going to come and where will it come from you see the way ministers have been attacked everywhere you call people to sow seeds the next thing someone is insulting you they, that is not the system of the world and of course i know that here and there people have exaggerated these things because there are bills to pay i don't want to tell you the weekly budget that runs this ministry it is not necessary but just believe me when i tell you you can run a conference with the weekly budget of this ministry and we're not even in our own place it's true the rentals the transportation the power and all the things that have to be put in place and yet you are supposed to be focused and loving that's why some men of God come up the stage. You see the anger. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Is it what part of amen? Can't you can't and you know that this this pain, the person is not bad. He's trying to say encourage me, and you are refusing. The Holy Ghost can use money to create joy. You are pastors imagine that we came here right now and we told you there is no finance for tonight's meeting the communion alone for tomorrow if i tell you how much 
was spent on the communion just for tomorrow's miracle service, you will be surprised. You will ask yourself whether it's necessary or necessary. Must we take communion? Can't we just speak prophecy instead? Prophecy is cheaper. Just be blessed. I mean, what is there with communion? It will not cost you anything for starters less than 25 million naira per month to float a television station. How much? Per month. Not HD. That's the channels you switch. That you say, please, let's move to another channel. That's what they paid. Did you hear what I said? Those channels that you see a lot of haze. Is it black? Is it white? This is what they paid. Didn't Satan pay men to say Jesus is not Lord? As soon as he resurrected, they called some people and said, okay, come, let me tip you. Say Jesus is not Lord. We will settle the words on the top. And Satan is still using money today. If the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not empowered in these end times, my brothers and my sisters, please listen to me. This is not about an addiction to money. This is money just like the anointing. Tools for kingdom advance. It is important. Some of our visitors, we just got news that because of, I think, the convocation or so. I didn't even know there was convocation happening on, on Saturday. And now they just passed a directive that, you know, all our people there, they should evacuate them from the... Um, the, the hotels that belong, you know, that we lodge them there. Can you imagine that? Just like that. Get out. Out. We have visitors coming. You and your money, get out. Now, imagine if I come and whisper and say, Reverend Bandoma, Pastor Fred, please, we need 500,000 this night. Now, can you find a way? If I do it directly, it will pinch me. So, find a way. Money can help you have integrity. Oh. Let me tell you this. It's true. It's true. Financial resources are important. Provided they are kept within the jurisdiction of their relevance. They work wonders. We need heavy financial resources. The gospel is free. But the means to take it to the lost is very expensive. The vehicle that carries the gospel is heavy. Every church, thank you, and that includes businesses. Please listen. We're going to pray. Must have, I've stated this before, but number one, must have a strategy for income generation. Now, the Bible is very clear as to how financial resources should come into the church. The Bible allows for tithes, allows for offerings, and all kinds of givings and partnership. The Bible allows that. Provided the resources are used with integrity and truthfulness. But because of the peculiarity of our world today, if all you do is depend on tithes and offering, you will only run church services. You can't run projects. I've, I've, been, I've been to the churches of all my dear friends and I've seen the projects that they are doing. And many of you may not know, but... With all humility and to the glory of God, we acquired a property recently. And um, I may not tell you how much that is, but I can only give you an idea. 36 plots of land. Now listen. It was paid cash without raising any, even the leaders didn't even know. So that when we come to church, we can serve God in truth and in spirit. And not just to come and say, people, we are going to have to do this. I'm not saying it's wrong to challenge people. Don't trivialize it. Reverend Uban Doma shared here that there are people who have the grace for helps. Anybody that is a kingdom financier, your first assignment after knowing God is to be extremely wealthy. If you are not wealthy, you are wicked and you are failed. To supply for the resources and the blessings of heaven. I insist and I make sure that there's no financial pressure whatsoever 
on the workers and the leaders in this ministry that everything that has to do with committing seeds is done by revelation and truthfulness don't be angry when you see pastors manipulating people i don't endorse it but sometimes it's an expression of the pain they were mentored to trivialize finances and so they pursued the things of god sincerely so but now they found out that there is a level of financial capability you must have to excel a jimmy during the business session for those of you who were here he ran us through a lot of demands minus luxury pastors will tell you here the amount of an average man of god just on dressing just not luxury just on dressing can build many houses are we together because a man of god cannot dress shabby and dress scattered is the same you that will say what is this this is not jesus When I started with the Lord, there was a year that God opened my eyes to the necessity of financing ministry. I remember when I switched and I said, believers, it's me that has been teaching you on purpose and the power of God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit and the kingdom. Now, in addition to that curriculum, God has introduced finance. Whoa, whoa. I had, I got the blow of my life. Apostle has backsliding. Jesus is Lord. What happened? Apostle, leaving all of these things to come to mundane things like finances. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, don't hate anyone. Don't, don't. I'm like Joseph. Sometimes persecution is proof that you are really sent. You see the ignorance in the people. And you know if I don't manifest, they will remain like this. They are persecuting me is validating the fact that they are ignorant. I went to the Lord crying to him and said, God, what is all this? And the Lord told me, you can choose to listen to men or listen to me. I'm showing you the future. And I said, Lord, show me your ways, please. Let me not get to a point in ministry where I have to do what I shouldn't do because I'm looking for finance most members don't know that men of god have other things with their lives too who pays the school fees of that man of god's child how do you run the church by the privilege of god's grace there are so many of our children here that we take care of it's not something to blow a trumpet about not school fees they are upkeep there are people whose daily living is in the pocket of another person and that done effortlessly i have seen and i tell you by the privilege of god's mercy the advantage of financial resources maybe this is why some of you came for this conference it may be a pastor conference but you have done well in these other areas but you may have been the victim of this scamish communication by the gates of hell that financial resources are not necessary change your mind Please change your mind the earlier the better so that you will not eat your children in the future and so that you will not sell your children to pay debt. The prophet, although a prophet, he died and left his children and one woman in debt. By the time you pastor families that are not doing well, you will find out that it is in the efficiency of the people that you are also blessed hallelujah when god showed me this i was grateful when i found the keys listen to me my brothers and my sisters full-time ministry in today's world does not mean the absence of activating streams of income it means full-hearted commitment hear what i'm telling you the 21st century church you need to adjust your understanding of full-time ministry 
full-time ministry does not mean throw away every opportunity to lift you it means let your heart be committed full-time because if you ignore everything and say me i'm not i'm not a businessman i don't do anything let me tell you hunger will always drive israel to egypt it was hunger that drove israel to egypt like he's driving many of you right now you love god until now you are beginning to teach things that you know should not be if you must be outstanding in ministry please make it a point of duty by the grace of god to conquer this finance thing the same way you press for the anointing the same way you press for revelation don't dichotomize them and don't let the devil make you feel one is carnal and no they are all spiritual what is carnal about money it takes the spirit for you to prosper the same way you press for character anointing revelation please add finance to the list as the tools together the body of jesus was hanging on the cross i've taught you no prayer warrior could bring that body down it took resources to bring the body who was the owner of the grave that jesus entered he came out from it and saved you but whose grave who donated his grave for prophecy to be fulfilled whose donkey did jesus climb if he was broke and he did not have a donkey there would be no triumphant entry he was born in a manger whose manger I will never pastor and lead the people who know God and don't know finances. They will know both. I believe in influence. I believe in the ease that kingdom understanding together with influence provides. Africa, do not mix Christianity and the depraved culture that our servitude, our pre- and post-colonial servitude has been interwoven with Christianity. We mix everything together and make doctrines out of them. Africa has largely been a territory of servitude. We have not understood leadership. We don't know influence. It's strange to our culture. And so in the dealings of God, we limit our understanding to submission, which is important. But we hate influence and the principles that get us to the corridors of power we hate and we fight it's wonderful to fear god it's wonderful to love god but if you do not have an efficient leadership you will not last there will not be a system of building the reason why this building is built because is because one block allowed another to stay on it if the block refuses and said that's not how i am you would not have a structure leadership number three strategy you have to execute systemically to build according to patterns number four is your reach from jerusalem from judea samaria to the ends of the earth he would have just said to the ends of the earth but he broke them in levels the way you sell Jesus in Jerusalem is not how you would do it in Judea. It's not how you would do it in, in Samaria. For every one of these regions and levels, there are strategies for your reach. And finally, finance. You need finance. It is one of the greatest tools. Do you know that in Europe today, Pastor, Islam is the fastest growing religion in Europe. They've never had one city-wide crusade. One. One. You know what they do? Agree to be gay and agree to be a Muslim will pay you through school. And they go back and say, Daddy, this is what they said. You say, I won't pay your school fees and you will not be a Muslim. You say, I've gotten the answer. Sir, where is the place to sign the signature? To be gay? Fine. To be a Muslim, fine. One of our dear ladies, I remember many years ago, she got born again. Her brother was still a Muslim. The father was still a Muslim. Then the brother got born again. Then eventually the father got born again. When the father got born again, pastor, true story, 
the wealthy people stash money at the back of a car and drove from Kogi to Lagos. They said, what is wrong? Sit down. What happened? Is it that you lost in business? What happened? Because they believe if you come to Jesus, it is because you are frustrated and you are welcome. But then they are saying, I mean, how have you reduced yourself to give your life to Christ? What happened? The day she told me, I said, my God. They snatched the car with money and opened it. Please deny Jesus and have money to get your life back. Hear me. If Michael Jackson ever said Jesus, even by mistake, he would have won more souls. I am Michael Jackson. I love Jesus on his shirt. You will write your name too. I am Sam. I love Even a wizard will say, I am a wizard. I need Jesus. That's the power of influence. Nobody asks you to wear what you wear. They made you wear it. They created a need and forced it. We can force a generation to see the relevance of Jesus. Not by poking it on people's eyes. But building correctly. The church must prosper. Please, pastors, hear me. Gone are the days where you tell people I'm a pastor and they pity you. They say, so, Pastor Alpha, this is it. You went and got a lecturing job in University of Joss. And now with all that God has done, this is how you want to waste your life. Whoever said ministry was a cause. Whoever said serving Jesus is what people do when they are failed in life and they don't know what else to do they say instead of wasting my life at least let me serve in the vineyard we must change that perception in the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes finance to lift it up we are mandated to lift it high we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada o kaka sunanka ubangi chika isayabo. Please hold hands with someone by your left and by your right. Micah chapter 4, please. We are going to pray. There is coming a generation that will defy this. There has to be a generation that will represent Christ properly. Micah chapter 4. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the influence of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of other stratas and influences and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Next verse. Verse 2. And many nations, how many? Many nations shall come, say come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. You see, let me tell you, every great move of God starts like a joke. The kingdom of God is likened to a living. It's a parable. A living looks small and harmless until it sees the, what they call it? The dough. You just mix a little of it and stand back and watch the power of that tiny thing you added. I remember those days when my mother would be making cake or something. I used to wonder that small thing. Just throw the thing there and just mix it. And it begins to rise. That's what is happening. 
something you are receiving we're making noise and people are these are noise makers they are just broke people consoling themselves uh -uh. the lord himself is the captain of this army god has gathered us from several places to tell you that whether or not in the fivefold ministry like reverend ubandoma shared or whatever dimension of kingdom service you must insist that lord through you my generation will know that jesus is lord lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. hallelujah hallelujah i wish the minister's conference were to run for days i would have taught you a lot of things one of them is the ministry of men you are not free until men come into your life. Please listen. We are going to pray. If you have money, you are not yet favored. You know you are favored when you have access to the hearts of men. True favor is not just money. True favor is men. And all that they have. I can give you money. Doesn't mean I love you. But when I give you my heart, with my heart is everything connected to me. Listen, let me tell you this. I remember the first major financial miracle that God brought to this ministry. Till tomorrow, I don't know the person. It was like a joke. Because when they make transfers to the ministry, I get the alerts. And I saw an alert that almost brought me to my knees. I said, God, what is this? Who is this person? And they didn't even text to say, okay, I'm the one. I said they should try to see if they can get me the person, and they couldn't. And I just said, this is it. Men. If you do not have men that lift your hands, you are going to fall in ministry. You may be Moses, but your hands will be tired. And you will need the hands that hold you. Financially, spiritually, giving you encouragement and love. You can't imagine how blessed I am hearing that pastor left Gombe. Gombe is very far. Zamfara, far. Reverend Ubanduma was here with his family. He's here again. One of my friends called me and said he's coming. And you know, this is not a standard conference. We didn't send any letter of invitation. I spotted different ministers here and there. Father, the mighty man that will hold my hands as I lift up your name. I draw them in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men. Favor with men, oh God. Shalabarakatoza predekatesh. Kalabar shanadas. Open the doors of favor with men.
Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. When Jesus came to the fig tree, he expected to find fruit. He came because he was hungry. Not finding fruit, he cursed it. If he found fruit, he would have blessed it. If your life and your ministry does not produce extraordinary results, your life will be full of bitterness and hatred and anger and competition. This is what you see happening around the body of Christ. This one hating this one. This one fighting this one. This one getting angry. There is no need. When God invests a dimension of strange results in your life and ministry, by the teaching of truth and by the mighty works that come from your hands, you will be surprised to see the way the nations will flow. They will inconvenience themselves to honor Christ in your life. Father, give me results. Real results. Results of salvation. Results of transformation. Results of miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. Is someone praying? And evidence is the end of all argument. A genuine result is the end of all argument. You are in business, cry. Give me results in business. Give my organization results. Consistent results. pray give me results hallelujah hallelujah john the prophet is in the prison and he sends his disciples to question the messiahship of jesus he says go and ask him are you the messiah or should we expect another Jesus does not answer. He turns back and begins to heal the sick and cast out devils. He said, go and tell John what you have seen. Go and tell him what are the signs of the Messiah. Ask John. You need real results in your life. You heard the testimony of our precious mommy. You see that? That you just sit in a car and something a challenge of many years just goes. Everybody is a giver. There is a level of results that will make them give. Please listen. Let me tell you this. The same person who will say, I will not give you five naira, is the same person who will carry money and say, sir, the privilege of having this. Everybody who gives to you has relatives in need that they say, don't disturb me again, and they will come. There is a level of impact that will make any seed look like a favor to you. You need to trust God. Results empower you yourself. There are companies today and there are businesses today that take a sizable portion of their profits. And I'm not talking of small startups. And transfer to this ministry consistently because of something that happened. I don't say this to brag. It's because we're in a pastor's conference. I am a non-executive board member in certain companies. I never sat down in any board meeting. I don't even know them. They believe I represent the ark of God to their business. And they are there. And I just see alerts in my phone. Where is this coming from? Don't trivialize results. Results can make your life easy. We're going to pray it again. Please don't be tired. Our time is gone, but we're men of God. Listen, Lord, I've seen certain dimensions of results, but multiply the results upon my life. Beyond argument, please pray. Beyond contention.
Abarakato Shabra Negate Baladosh and the Kepras Kadabaladosh Rigetegedegedegede Bashabarana Balakata Pros Hallelujah. The last prayer point. John chapter 1 and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for as long as you live. There is a goal, there is an object behind everything that we do, that we call ministry. Whether it is the fivefold ministry or your business as a ministry, ministry is any channel that can lead to souls saved, lives transformed, and Jesus glorified. If giving birth can do that, it is ministry. If singing can do that, it is ministry. He says there was a man sent from God. His name was John 7. The same, the Bible says, came for a witness. Say witness. To bear witness of the light that men through him, his witness, his testimony, his results might believe. That's it. When all is said and done, dear people of God, this is all we are driving at. That through my life, through the hand of God upon my life, through my business, through the ministry, through family, through everything, that Jesus be glorified. You're going to turn this to a prayer and say, Father, use everything. Use my results. Use my life. Use my teachings. Use my business. Use my publicity. Even for your glory. Someone pray. For your glory. Use the wealth that you give me. Use the influence that you give me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Access to the hearts of kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll just speak over your life now. We we'll allow the impartation for the miracle service. Our time is gone. We want to just release everyone to go and rest. Tonight we have a session and then we are breaking the fast tomorrow by one. And after that we return for the miracle service and an impartation. But I will pray over all that we're involved with. But then the impartation, I know that many of you have come to receive. Look, let me tell you this. Truly speaking, a man can receive nothing except it is given. If God does not give you, you cannot have it. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. I want to pray. And the elders of the Jews build it. And they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built it and finished it. It's one thing to desire to build. But the Bible says they prospered and they finished. While they were building, there was prophecy. That was ensuring that the building prospers and that it finishes. It matters the voice and the voices that speak over your life and over your ministry. Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until a voice opened his heavens. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven. When he met with John... John said, mm -mm, I desire, I mean, this is what you have is what I desire. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. No man can open, as it were, in this regard, his own heavens. It will take a voice. God kept watching but never spoke from heaven. When he submitted to the prophetic ministry of John, his heavens were opened and a voice spoke. This 
is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Listen, pastors, a voice has to tell creation to hear you. Hear ye that church. Hear ye that business. Hear ye that radio program. Hear ye that TV program. Otherwise, you will go up the mountain, nobody will come. You will go up the valley, nobody will come. You will stand by the rivers of Gennesaret and nobody will come. Because a voice never said they hear you. Hear ye him. There are men and women of God here. You are anointed. God has blessed you. But your environment is not placing a demand on the grace. There seems to be a resistance. I have seen powerful men of God. Absolutely anointed. But there is no open doors. No influence. No access. No increase. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from God. I submit before you and even before your people. I confess that there is nothing I have in myself outside of Christ. The privilege of the office, the mantle, and the grace you have given. This has come from you and it belongs to you. I declare over every ministry here by the power of prophecy be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit be shifted to the next level of exploit I declare in the name of Jesus the two lift gates that are closed over your ministry we speak right now may they be opened in the name of Jesus the men and the women that must show up in this season to both protect and to lift the hand of God upon your life I call them by prophecy right now I'm seeing a key in the spirit a big key this is what the Lord is showing me Lord whatever this access represents in the spirit and for whoever this is for I pray and I cry to you let the keys of their individual territories be given unto them in the name of Jesus. There are men of God here that love God, but you are out of revelation. You have cast out. You don't even know what to study again. You have preached everything. Fresh illumination from the throne. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for your prayer life. Shakato barakatabatea. Let fresh fire come upon your altar. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adullam. They saw him in a cave yet they were not afraid. They still said you will be king over us. Listen. It is terrible to have people come to you just looking for your glory alone. You must have people that whether in glory and in shame, they are there for you. I declare may God find such people and call to your life. There are pastors that have many members, but they do not have kings. They do not have men who have voices. Listen to me. It is in the multitude of men that the king's honor is. But in the multitude of kings, a king's dominion is also enforced. You don't just need men. You also need men that have voices. I pray for you. God will not only bring men. He will bring influences to your ministry. Whatever is taunting the growth of any church here any ministry you have done the best in gathering everything you know to do i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit may the gates of your church be open may the gates of your fellowship be open may the gates of your ministry be open
Hallelujah. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There are many pastors. Any good thing you do is misunderstood. You call for a healing meeting. They say you are using charms. You want to bless people. They say you are selfish. You sow into people. They say it's manipulation. You don't give. They say you are greedy. Let me tell you. Correct perception. Correct sight. Is something only God can do. He touched his eyes and men were like trees. He touched it again. God needs to touch the eyes of people where your church is located so that they will see you for what you stand for. Because there are times, listen to me, that before you get to the king, Ahitophel reached there before you and he can give a counsel that is not of God. I declare every misrepresentation of your life, of your ministry, of your business, of your organization. Let it be straightened out and corrected now. You have humbled yourself to honor me, to honor the grace that God has put upon my life. I cry to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, let the grace and the mantle of honor let it follow you back to your church let it follow you back to your business let it follow you back to your ministry in the name of jesus christ let me speak over your finances we have taught here in this house that there are three levels of wealth there is transactional wealth wealth that comes by exchanging value for a reward there is transformational wealth wealth that comes on account of the impact you create in people but there is sovereign wealth wealth that comes by prophecy and by the finger of god in the name of jesus i pray for every church here and i pray for every project and every individual here by the mystery of divine supplies the raven that can come to feed elijah at brook cherry let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. Let there be financial miracles over your life and ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two things. It says, the Lord knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. There are people in ministries that the devil will position intentionally to continue to misrepresent the ministry and to destroy what they represent. You are going to have to trust God for grace. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. One wrong voice can scatter what you have been doing for years. One wrong voice. The rumor about Jesus... That he said he would destroy the temple and he would build it in three days. Some said he would build it in one day. All the two, they had it somewhere. Listen to me. There are people that come to churches and tear down everything God is doing. They, you will never see them in one church. In three years, they've gone to ten churches. Then they start writing articles. I've been everywhere and I've been to every church. No man of God is sincere. No man of God is true. They may be well-meaning, but there are spirits that are responsible for those things. I pray in the name of Jesus that a spiritual garrison be created around your ministry that protects the hand of God upon your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. For any ministry trusting God for land, you are trusting God to shift to the next level. May the God of heaven, in a way you may not even understand, may he surprise you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Finally, I pray for you. The encounters that can sustain a man. The encounters that can strengthen your conviction. That you will no longer talk based on hearsay. Or because a man you respect is talking or saying the same thing. May that level of encounter in the name of Jesus, may God grant it unto you. Yeah.